a longer way, in an extended operation. As I explained last week, you have a neutron, which now is center becomes the electron, and the balance becomes a proton, and this entity and this entity, due to interaction of the fields inside them, lead themselves to creation of their own central magnetic gravitational field point. So, if this was neutron one, now this becomes neutron two and neutron three, and in the field interaction of the materials or matter states which created internally on each, in respect to the fields and forces of the plasma of outside, this in turn itself becomes a proton and electron itself. This becomes again a proton and electron of itself. And this process will carry on. If you look at the book, we always said, book number three, the unicos. What you see here, we always considered that the totality has been. Can you hear me? Rick? Yes, yes we can. Yes. So, if you look at this neutron decay, which we have accepted up to now, now becomes universal decay. It becomes the creation of unicos. And then what we see, the structure, as we go further and further, concentrates in more purity, in more a smaller dimension, and a stronger field forces of the creation. Because now, the surrounding fields have been weaker, have left behind, and the center has become the new creation. So, in a way, when we go to the sub-matter level, in a sub-matter level, we are dealing with the stronger gravitational magnetic fields of a higher order, not of a lower order at the matter state we are in. Because we understand, the electron part it becomes the stronger fields where the sub-matter protons still lead to the creation of new protons and carry on. In the space technology of the future, our scientists will have a fields day playing with this thing. Because it's absolutely easy. All you need to do, when you go to the center, you travel by one million times, ten to the power of a thousand, where here, you were one to the power of ten. If space scientists understand this, deep space travel becomes child's play. Because if you go low enough, then you go to the process of the strength of the origin of the Creator. But then the question comes, what is a Creator? What do we call a Creator? What Creator has got to do with us? And then it goes back to the origin of the creation. Then it goes, as we said, what we understood to be part of the soul of the man. I made man in the image of myself, because if you, in reality, look, this, here, has always been in here, and always been in here, and always existed in totality. It's never changed. It's us who is taking more bits of its surface, that it leads to manifestation of the Truth, the original essence, of the creation. To what extent we can go, to what extent we can understand, then it forces itself back to the totality, back to the origin. Because in all the processes that we have created, all the divisions which has come from the decay of what we call nuclear conversion, there is always residual, that these residuals themselves have become the creation of new dimensions, new fields. That the matter states, or the plasma of the proton and the neutron, or electron, have to manifest themselves mm. in the spectrum. So, 
what we understand from the new physics is that the life of the creation, the cycle of the creation is everlasting. It'll never end. And if it ends, it goes back again to the origin and it starts the full cycle. So, did not need much to start this universe or unicorns. It's just needed a very little to see what it does.